Hi, welcome to Chat with Sunlight. Like Sunlight's curriculum offerings, we will explore homeschooling through the lens of a literature-based christ Center education. Join us for everything you might be interested in, for organizing your homeschool, connecting with others, and details on literature-based learning, and maybe a few sneak peeks. Hi, welcome to Chat with Sunlight. I am here today with 2016 scholarship winner, Kate Gage, as we knew her from 2016. She's now Katie Rankin. Um, you know how you do. You take on that husband's name when you get married. But Katie, give us a little update us on what's happened since 2016. Yes. Uh, so I graduated. Uh, I was fully homeschooled K through 12, graduated in 2016. I went to college at John Brown University, which is a private Christian school in northwest Arkansas. Um, I was so close to Oklahoma that I could I could walk across the Oklahoma border <laughs> Um and I got my degree in three and a half years in Christian ministry with a minor in English. Um, and I almost had a minor in theater. I was like two credits shy and there was no way I was staying another semester for two credits. Um, and I graduated and then I have uh, had a couple different jobs since then, but I am currently working as the youth minister or the student ministries director for a church in Bullard, Texas. Okay. So you are no longer in the Arkansas area. You're down in- No, ma'am. <laughs> Great. Yes, I so I grew up in Texas and um, I'm actually living in where my the same town my parents live in. We moved a bit when I was a kid, but this is where they've been for the past about 11 years now. And so um, I did a lot of growing up here. And it just so happened that um, the, the path of my life brought me back to here, which has been really, really neat. I love it when God brings us back home in our in our Absolutely. head. Home. So so Katie. I remember reading through some of the things that you had submitted as a scholarship winner because you you send in an essay for your application and yes. give updates. One of the things I remember that stuck out in my brain was in high school, I think you worked as in the puppeteer ministry. I did. And then I saw that you, I, obviously you already gave it away when you were close to a minor in theater, that you were in the theater, you did stage managing. And I did. So I'm assuming you have a heart for the theater, the drama. I, I did enjoy it. Yes. Um, it's not really something that's a part of my life anymore because it's so time consuming. Um, but it, uh, I do love theater. My sister is now involved with theater and that's really cool. Um, and I'm really proud of her. And actually my husband uh, was a theater person as well. And so um, when we met and got to know each other, that was a big connection point for us. So your major at John Brown University was Christian Ministries. Correct. Did you have an emphasis, like a specialty under that Christian ministry? Yes. Uh, so this, my specialty was um, youth development. So that specifically focused on teenagers, which is obviously what I'm what I'm working with now. Um, but there was a lot of child development classes in there as well. And so um, I learned quite a lot about sort of the way that we grow up and what our brain does in the meantime. Um, but yes, my concentration was youth ministry and that's where I've ended up. Tell me what it was like when you started your job with COVID all going on. How was Sure. Um, I started in August of 2020 and like I said, I'm in, I'm in Texas. So the, the restrictions were not as strict as they were in other places. So my students were going back to school in person. They were still doing things like football and um, sports and extracurriculars. Um, but uh, the church specifically was still doing a lot of masking and some social distancing, which did make it hard to do certain things. Uh, but I was still able to have youth group. We had youth group every week um, and we still had Sunday school. And uh, I'm very thankful for being able to start my job in a really tumultuous time um, because there were a lot of people I think who struggled a lot more than I did. Um, but I was, I will say, I was really glad when we were finally able to lift those restrictions and just sort of go to having normal youth group. It makes a lot of the planning and prep a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, and I think we touched on it. Um, hopefully it got in on this clip, but you were talking about how you went from mask to not mask and it was like- so Yes, and I finally <laughs> got to see their faces. <laughs> Um, you know, to, cause there were times when, you know, I went to like the, um, the musical that the, that the high school did. And so up on the stage, of course I can see them, but they're very far away. And so it was finally being able to interact with them face to face, um, both of us. And that was, that was really special to me. I was very thankful when that happened. So you, you graduated using sunlight from high school, went to John Brown, um, 
did sunlight prepare you for going to college? Do you think? I think so. I think um, my my mom, in a lot of cases, was harder on me than some of the college professors were, <laughs> um, which I think is a is is kind of a common story among homeschooling families. Uh, and then, but in other cases, I, I did run into some really strict professors. Um, I think homeschooling gave me a lot of discipline that prepared me well for college and life outside of college, uh, because you have to take a lot of initiative in college to get your homework done, to get your assignments done. Uh, and I had already been doing that for years and years at that point. And so that was really easy. And I was the person that finished classes and then did my homework and then was ready to hang out. And I ran into this problem occasionally where people, um, were surprised. They were like, Oh, I have to, I have to study. And I'm like, well, I, I did, I'm done. <laughs> um, and, uh, that, that was a, that was an often repeated <laughs> interaction. Um, but uh, I think also sunlight gave me a really good educational foundation for a lot of things um, in terms of history and language arts. Those were my strengths. Uh, I was I was not a math or science kid. Um, and so I sort of I, when it came to college, I took the bare minimum requirements for math and science and then I was done. Um, but even so. Uh, the, the classes certainly were not easy because they did not play to my strengths, but I knew I had been well prepared for them. Uh, and so I was thankful for that. So is there, um, what levels did you do while you were in sunlight? Like, I assume you, you did the American history, was, you did world history. It was all the way through K through 12 was all sunlight. I never didn't have sunlight. Um, my mom was a, a teacher before I came along. I don't remember when she stopped teaching, but I think it was around the time that she started teaching me. Um, and so she, I know, did a lot of research on different curriculums and Sunlight was the one that she landed on. Mm -hmm. um, and we used, uh, sometimes we used Sunlight Science. And then I think when I got into middle school and high school, we switched over to um, something else. I don't remember Apology. what it was. Uh, no, I don't think it was Apologia, actually, because I remember going to some sort of homeschool convention and being like, oh, I know what Apologia is, but we don't use it. I don't remember what it was. We used Matthew C., which I think is Sunlight's recommended math curriculum, which really worked for me because it was so visual and I needed that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do well with um, sort of the hypotheticals of math and uh, I, I needed the visual that Matthew C. provided and it was really good. Um trying to remember what else we did. By the time I was in high school, my I had a really high reading level. I was reading pretty well by the time I was four. And so I was always ahead with the language arts and the reading. And my mom would have to almost set limits on me and be like, you, you can't read so far ahead in your readers because that makes a lot more work for me to have to ask you all the questions. <laughs> you know, please slow down, please limit yourself. Um, and so when I got to high school, I was granted a lot of freedom. And at one point my literature was just pick for American classics to read and write a book report, fully discussing the themes and uh, things discussed. And that worked really well for me as well. I'm still a reader. I still read uh, over a hundred books in a year. Um, and that's one of my main hobbies is reading. Uh, people are like, what do you like to do? And I, I sometimes don't know how to explain that my hobby is just books. So <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I, I, I do remember, I do remember all the sunlight literature very fondly. So did you have a favorite book with sunlight that you could read? Um, I did. I was trying to think what it was. Um, there were there are several books that I can think of that I loved. Um, I read A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I read that book quite literally to pieces, like the pages were falling out of the paperback to pieces. Um, so that was my favorite book when I was a kid. And now that I'm older, um, I think of the sunlight books, the ones that I still keep on my sort of favorites list would probably be Outlaws of Sherwood by Robin McKinley. Yes. I have a, a big love for fairy tale retellings. Um, if a book feels like a grown up fairy tale to me, it's almost instantly a favorite. Um, so I still love that one a lot. And then Ender's Game, which mm -hmm. uh, was the first like proper science fiction book I ever read. Um, and I still, I still love sci-fi and I, I love Star Wars. I loved it from, you know, growing up and I still love Star Wars. And so Ender's Game was kind of the book that showed me that 
you could have Star Wars in book form. <laughs> um, and uh, I still I still enjoy sci fi and um, still love Ender's Game and a lot of the uh, books around it in the series as well. So does your husband share the love of books like you do? Oh, yeah. He doesn't read as much as I do, but definitely um, he's more he leans more sci fi, whereas I lean more fantasy. Um, but we definitely are both readers. Uh, we have multiple. I, I want to say there's probably like four bookcases in our tiny apartment and then several other shelves within the house that have books. And that's just that's part of our life. Um, it's it's really awesome because anytime I say, oh, I, you know, I just finished this great book because I still read really fast. You know, I, I read this great book. Let me tell you about it. And he's like, OK. Um, and though he reads, you know, much less than I do, he does a lot of audiobooks. And so um, it was through talking to him that I rediscovered my love of audiobooks uh, and have continued to do that. And yeah, it's it's great. It's a big part of our relationship. I say audiobooks are great. It's still you're still being word for word of the literature in your brain, it still counts as reading in my Oh, absolutely. Audiobooks are definitely reading. Yeah. Um, and anybody who tells you different is incorrect. <laughs> my, my oldest daughter and her husband, who are also in Texas, they actually, part of their um, like evening wind down, they'll just do read alouds with each other. Oh, um, that's sweet. And that's just, they'll pick a series that, you know, neither one's reading, but that's the one they're reading together. And that's, they'll just read chapter for chapter back and forth. Uh, now that they're starting to have kids, I don't think they read it as often because, you know, there's somebody. Kids change wanting, a lot of things. But I know they still do it. It's just maybe not every day. Sure. Um, so Katie, what has been, what do you feel has been one of the biggest challenges coming from school life into adult life. When I was in school and college, I felt like I didn't have any free time and I was constantly stressed. And then I graduated and started a job and realized that I had way more free time than I thought I did while in school. Um, and on the one hand, I don't have homework anymore. And so I don't have to worry about that. And that's great. I do not miss doing homework. But um, I do miss some of the freedom that came with being in academic settings. Uh, and I miss that um, school had built in breaks. You know, in college, there was spring break and fall break and summer break. And at, at home, we had different breaks throughout the year. Um, because it's so hot in Texas, you can't hardly do anything. So a lot of time we would start our school year, so to speak, in July and then have more time off around Christmas and Easter. My dad's a pastor, so those times of year are really busy for us um, when I was growing up. Um, and so now that I have a job, sometimes I find myself thinking, what do you mean I have to go to work every day? <laughs> like Every day, every week, every, every day. day. And I am in a place right now where my jobs do offer me a lot of flexibility and I do work from home. Um, but even so, I have moments... Um, especially with not at the moment, I'm kind of, I have a more relaxed schedule right now, but in prior times I have found myself thinking, Oh my goodness, this is just so much. And it's happening so often. I wish everything was just less often and quieter and with less people involved. <laughs> but no, I, I, I think that would be the hardest part. Yeah. Well, in your future, when you're a homeschool mom, you can have those breaks again. So Hopefully. <laughs> um, if you were to give advice, so this is something I've been asking all our scholarship winners. Um, sure. Generally, I ask um, advice you would give to a high school student thinking of using sunlight or someone else, pros, con, or homeschool, not homeschool, however advice you want to give. Um, advice to moms thinking back, you as a product of being homeschooled, what's the pro of homeschooling your kids, do you think? And then um, any general life advice you might want to give. So there's kind of like three different sure. things. You can lump it all together or spread yeah. it. Yeah. So to a high school student, if you're considering using sunlight um, or just homeschooling in general, I would say it, it offers so much flexibility with learning so that you can tailor um, what you are learning to best suit your needs and your learning style. 
um, as I said, I was a I was a language arts kid, and so I was able to put a lot of emphasis on reading and writing and uh, English and literature, and that was really awesome because it brought me so much joy in the process of learning. And at the same time, I wasn't that great with numbers and science. Um, and so I was able to take a slower pace with some of those things to make sure I really understood what I was learning before moving on to the next. And I think homeschooling is the best way to have those opportunities for that sort of tailored learning. And I think it um, makes learning much more enjoyable if it's if it's done well. Moms, you know, take a breath. Your kids are going to be fine. They are going to grow up. They're going to turn out okay. And it is okay for them to get Bs because a B still means good. <laughs> and and that is okay. Um, and also please don't forget to relax and take some time for yourself and build that into your, your day. If you're homeschooling, then you have a lot more flexibility than a lot of families do. And sometimes that means that you set your kiddos up with some Legos and you go have a cup of tea by yourself for an hour. That's fine. Like <laughs> Being a homeschooling mom doesn't mean that you have to be, um, always with your kids and providing, you know, educational stimulation 24 seven, it's perfectly okay for them to sit down and watch TV for a little bit. That's fine. Um, so that's, I don't know. I think that's what I saw both in my mom and the moms of my friends when I was growing up. So let me ask you, here's one more question I meant to ask you earlier, using sunlight sure. and then going off to college, which you went to a Christian university, but it's definitely, you go from living under mom and dad's roof and mom and dad's faith, even though they've raised you to have your own, when you go off to college, you are you, you're no longer, I mean, you still answer to your mom and dad. I'm not saying that, but you yeah. are your individual. You get, you get a lot more independent once you go to school. Do you feel that sunlight came along and helped secure your faith going forward? Did they give you a good perspective and going forward in the world? Um. I think the greatest thing sunlight did in terms of faith, well, for one, sunlight provides the opportunity for biblical teaching to be part of the school day, mm -hmm. um, which I think is really convenient if you want to raise children in a Christian home. It just meshes right in with everything else that you're doing. And I still remember some of the scripture that I memorized when I was in school. Um, but I think actually what sunlight did in terms of helping me build a foundation for my faith was teach me logic and critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I did encounter people of different uh, mindsets than me, I didn't feel like the foundation of my world was shaking because there were people who disagreed um, and particularly because there were people who disagreed and they weren't like the evil atheist stereotype that I felt like I knew of growing up that like, Oh, I'm going to leave this home. And then everybody's just going to like be out to get me. And it was really more just like, no, they're just normal people. And they disagree with me. Um, but it's, it's possible to disagree with someone and engage the critical thinking to see why you disagree with them and still have a perfectly healthy friendship with them. That doesn't require you. It's not just a friendship as a pathway to like converting them or whatever. It's a friendship because you want a friend and you disagree and you learn how to have healthy conversations around that, that do not damage your friendship. Well, Katie, thank you for your time today. I know that, um, it was a rough start getting us started, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, and we hope to, we'll catch up with you again. Hopefully I'll see you at a homeschool convention when I'm there and you'll say, hey, I know you. <laughs> Maybe so, that'd be great. That'd Thank be you so much. Thank you, Katie. Thank you for joining us today. Do you have an idea for a podcast topic or do you want to chat with Sunlight on an upcoming episode? Email us at connections at sunlight.com.